Welcome and thank you for joining us. You're listening to the Beyond 50 radio program. I'm Daniel Davis. On the program today, we're going to be presenting a nice, wonderful cornerstone of health that we should all be concerned about because of how it affects one in three Americans. It's also one of those things that are beginning to reach its ugly little fingers out into remote corners of the world in areas that never even heard of this probably before until recently. On the program today, we're going to be talking about diabetes. Yeah, we listen to that, and it seems that we're just kind of expected to have something like this happen to us. But doesn't just the thought of something like that kind of feel unnatural? And what can we do about it if it happens to either ourselves or someone we love? Well, on the program today, we're going to be joined with Dr. Gabriel Cousins. He is the author of seven internationally acclaimed books, including Conscious Eating and Depression Free for Life. He's also known worldwide as a spiritual teacher and leading expert in the raw, live plant source nutrition. He also functions as a holistic physician, psychiatrist, family therapist, and cutting-edge researcher on health and healing diabetes naturally. The New York Times calls him the fasting guru and detoxification expert. He's going to be talking with us today about the tree of life and what we can do when it comes to having a complete diabetes recovery program as a holistic approach. I'd like to welcome to the Beyond 50 radio program today our guest, Mr. Dr. Gabriel Cousins. Thank you for joining us here on the program today. Daniel, it's a pleasure to be with you. You do such a good job. I always enjoy talking to you. <laughs> well, I always enjoy having you on the phone, and I'll tell you, what's really interesting is probably about a year ago, or actually, no, I think it was actually earlier this year, we attended a diabetes expo, and these are starting to pop up quite regularly, much like race for the cure, run for the cure, sit and think and drink for the cure, that sort of a thing. And as I was talking with someone uh, about the radio program, and I could hear in the background my wife talking with someone, and you could tell they were sort of in a heated discussion, but it was more what I could pick up from the energy of the gentleman talking at her, and it was about diabetes, I think. So I get done with my conversation, and I turn, and the first thing my wife says is this gentleman standing next to her is, Dan, this man here doesn't believe you can be cured of diabetes. And I looked at him, and I seen his body language like he was ready to arm himself for an argument or a battle. And I smiled, and I just simply said, that's okay. And it deflated everything in him. (laughs) And my feeling was, if you don't believe you can cure diabetes, then that's okay with me. But the fact is, it's actually happening, isn't it? Yeah, the, the point is, <clears throat> and I'll, my new book is coming out, there's a cure for diabetes, second edition, we cite 120 people, right? and we have 60% cure rate. Cure means blood sugar less than 100, no medications for non-insulin-dependent diabetics in three weeks. Okay, we're, we're three limiting weeks. that. Wow. Three weeks, three weeks. We're not talking about a year, we're talking about three weeks. And for insulin-dependent diabetes, Type 2, 24% in three weeks. And insulin-dependent type 2 is kind of like type 1. And for type 1, which is really amazing, is 21%. Mm-hmm. 21% are off, type 1 diabetics are off all insulin and have a blood sugar less than 100, and 31% are off all insulin with a blood sugar somewhere hovering above 100. So we definitely can heal it, uh, but what that gentleman was revealing to you was the basic uh, belief system of the, the ger- what, what's taught in every medical school. Right. So he wasn't, he was wrong, but he was relating to, you know, the basic teaching. Now, you can't treat it, you can't heal it by taking insulin, but you can heal it by changing your diet. And that's the part that's also missing in the discussion. Right. Well, you know, and that was the thing. It wasn't to say that he was wrong. I just agreed, okay, if you don't believe that this can happen, you know, our beliefs are very powerful, obviously. They're the difference between whether we can make ourselves sick a lot of times or make ourselves better. And it seemed to me that if you believe that, well, I'm not going to stand here and argue 
But at the same time, if there were a way, would you be open to just taking a look at it? So I had just finishing the diabetes program here, and, and some of the people who are type 1 non-insulin dependent, uh, type 2 non-insulin dependent, um, come into the program not really sure this can work. Right. Okay. And in a week or two, or as soon as their blood sugars go below 100, they start to become pretty clear believers. So I think even going into it, you know, it's like, well, you know, the world says this, and what, you know, so it 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 is something that you have to ex- almost experience to really, really, really get it, you know, especially mm-hmm. if you're diabetic. So I have empathy for that, and people really share afterwards. Well, I wasn't really too sure, but here I am, and there it goes. It's done. I feel it. Now, here's what I would like to do. First of all, uh, is to Kind of educate our listeners, if you could, the difference between a type 1 and a type 2 diabetic, I guess. Okay. So there's three levels, okay, okay. Of, of the discussion. And there's more, because I think there's a very important thing that they call type 3, which is pretty serious. Mm-hmm. Type 1 means you have an autoimmune response where you're making antibodies against the beta cells of your pancreas And the beta cells are what make insulin. That's type 1, okay? And that can come from mother's milk, not mother's milk, having dairy when you were younger, where you make antibodies from the dairy and it goes against your beta cells. Or it can come from viral infections at any age. Or it can also come from vaccinations. Okay. And and there's... there's the rate of diabetes increases 147% in children that have kind of some multiple vaccinations. So that's type 1, autoimmune. Type 2 is a little bit more physiological, and um, it usually comes from diet, a diet that is primarily high in white sugar, white flour, junk food, soft drinks, that kind of intake, uh, but uh, including very high fructose diet, particularly the corn syrup, uh, uh, high fructose, is definitely associated. So that's type 2. Now there's another level of the type 2 where your system is so inflamed that it kind of, your pancreas, that it burns out and you no longer are able to produce enough insulin. Your beta cells are worn out. Mm -hmm. Now, the key is understanding from my new definition that diabetes type 2 is a genetic downgrade. It it represents a toxic epigenetic shift and where your genetic expression is is wounded and kind of goes it goes into diabetes type of, of, of situation. Now, type 2, and this is where I wanted to make a point, they're calling it type 3 diabetes, but really it's just a symptom of diabetes, is there's a very high percentage, let's say double the rate, of people who get Alzheimer's with type 2 diabetes because it's a total inflammation of the body. And you have an accelerated atherosclerosis, which really affects the brain, and also you get insulin resistance of the brain, which means you can't get glucose to the brain, and that is associated with a definitely increased rate of Alzheimer's. So wow. This is, the, this is the key thing that people have to keep in mind. Um, if you want me to go a little bit further, the, there's been some very exciting breakthroughs besides just healing your diabetes and getting out of insulin resistance by eating a low, moderately low glycemic diet, okay, which is the key getting out of insulin resistance, and that by accident, I'm going to say by accident, a physician was uh, healing her husband or trying to heal her husband of Alzheimer's, and she came across um, coconut oil, and within three days of giving him like five tablespoons of coconut oil a day, his 
Alzheimer's, which was pretty significant, dissipated. How come? Well, what it is, is he was indeed, uh, his brain had become insulin resistant, couldn't get glucose to feed the memory centers, which mm -hmm. is what we're talking about. Right. In the hippocampus kind of region and so forth. But the coconut oil is metabolized directly to ketones, which is another form of energy, and it supplies about 90% of the energy that the brain needs. So suddenly, he's getting ketone energy to the brain, and with a few days, those areas that have been energetically deprived of fuel are having ketone energy fuel, and he gets healed of, of his Alzheimer's. Wow. Now, that's kind of a little bit out there. I mean, it's, I'm kind of in the field, right? So I'm, thinking, I'm l listening to everything. And now <laughs> more and more people are discovering that. Right. It's extremely exciting because you've got to have energy to the brain. Mm -hmm. And that is a one way of dealing with it. Of course, the best way is to change your diet and move out of insulin resistance. Mm -hmm. So what insulin resistance means in the brain or anywhere else in the body is the insulin is no longer working to bring glucose into the brain. Mm -hmm. Therefore, the energy centers, like the hippocampus area, which affects memory, are compromised. So it's kind of uh, really interesting to see. Now, a movie now, was... Oh, go I, ahead. I'm going to tell you one more thing. Sure. You know, because usually we say, well, it's just bad diet. You, you created it. Right. But there's another problem that happens with age. Okay, uh, and, and that problem is that with age, there's a genetic dysregulation of an enzyme called glucose 6-phosphatase. Hmm. And most people haven't heard of it. And we start to Im increase more of that. And what glucose 6-phosphatase does is make you produce more glucose. We call it endogenous. You make uh, endogenous, it means you're making glucose in your liver, in your kidneys. And that begins to actually raise your blood sugar from inside. It's not dependent on diet. And that increases with age. That's a little bit, that's a problem. So what we know is about half the people in the United States, I'm just going to stay with the United States here, between the ages of 30 and 65 are pre-diabetic. But over the age of 65, 27% of the population over the age of 65 actually has outright diabetes. And I believe it's associated with this increase uh, genetically of the glucose phosphatase. Mm -hmm. So that's a pretty interesting thing. There is something we can do for that, which is good news, of course, um, besides diet, which does make a difference, and living healthy, which upgrades your genetic expression. And that's, there's a, a blocker called chlo chlorogenic acid, which is from green coffee bean extract. Okay? And what that is, is it will block the enzyme, 6-glucose phosphatase, that makes you make more glucose. So in people who are older, and I'm going to say 50 and older, this enzyme is increasing, and of course it varies. I mean, I see people in their 30s with this problem, and um, I will give them this enzyme, uh, the, the, the chlorogenic acid, I mean, that will block the enzyme, and that really does help bring the blood sugar down, particularly in the morning. Mm -hmm. If it's overnight, it particularly goes higher. Mm -hmm. So it's, there's more to this going on, and people with age above, you know, 50, but again, I'd say people in their 30s have this, begin to, you know, have more and more of this um, genetic shifting. And so we do what we can do to, uh, to turn it around. Now, here's the thing, you know, uh, you said that it isn't entirely related to diet, but it's a pretty good culprit when you consider... It's, you know, it's your 95%. Right, exactly, because I was going to say there was a time when we used to eat more out of the garden and, you know, when it came to meat, it, there it was out there roving in the field. And we started getting into processing our food. And then, of course, with processing and storage, you've got to preserve 
the stuff sitting on the shelf. So, you know, they're not doing it the way they used to, at least when you go to the store. So it seems like one of the uh, more common sense things is you avoid the middle of the store and you just go around the outside. <laughs> yeah, right. What, 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 what you're referring to is what, what the research actually shows the junk food, the cheapest, right, is in the middle aisle. Mm-hmm. And people think they're saving money, but they're actually spending more money because they're getting, you know, they have to buy two to three times more to get adequate nutrition. You get adequate calories because junk food right. is funny, but adequate nutrition, different story, and that further weakens the system. Mm-hmm. You know, so it's, it, it actually isn't cheaper besides the result of disease, which, of course, is expensive. I think what's funny about what you just pointed out is how we buy the information that we see on the box or the package. And I remember a piece by Jerry Seinfeld when he says, yeah, so you take a look at the package and this says that it's got about 32% of your daily allowance of whatever this big long word is that he said. He says, well, I guess that's a good amount of that. (laughs) Right. Now, you have a documentary called Simply Raw, which I had uh, the chance to watch, which was really pretty astounding, in which you pretty much highlight six people who went in a Simply Raw direction and you observed them. Tell us about that a little bit and how that began to affect the current program that you have at the Tree of Life. Well, I've been healing diabetes for, like, at least, you know, close to 40 years. Wow. So... The, some life of people came to me, some people staying at the Tree of Life Center U.S., which is what we're called, and said, you know what, we'd like to do a movie on live foods, we want this, this, and this. And I said, well, no, let's do something really interesting that hasn't been done before. Let's take a typical junk food American eater who's got diabetes, at two. And just and to be sure, we're plucking happens. him out of a drive through waiting for his meal. <laughs> right, and, and and let's just put them on just a live food diet for 30 days and see what happens to their diabetes. That was how the idea came about, and it got very clear, gee, this works. Not only that, their cholesterol dropped, their triglycerides dropped, their you know LDLs dropped, their energy increased, everything got better, they got healthier, their blood pressure uh, Almost everybody comes with the diabetes, it's the high blood pressure, particularly with age. That all goes away. They get off all their medications, and that's kind of what we saw happen. You know, some people got off like 13 medications, others got off 11, you know, and, and, and they also lost weight. Right. You know, so the average weight loss was 18 pounds. And that's, not, that's good, you know, for three weeks. I've had actually people come in who were on 200 units of insulin and lose, you know, 46 pounds. Wow. So, and, you know, and, and have their blood sugar come to normal and off all their insulin, 200 units in three weeks. So these are things that we see happen. But that kind of, set, that kind of woke me. It's like, okay, we can really make a major program out of this if we understand what we're doing. Since then, it's much more refined, much more sophisticated, and... We have certain herbs and supplements that we don't do right away, but in the last uh, week or two, depending, we'll, you know, we'll put people on it. Because I would also, we said three weeks, but after that, more people heal. Wow. You know, it's not like three <coughs> weeks, that's it. You're not going to heal after that. But no, you get a progressive increasing amount of people healing if they stay on the diet and live the lifestyle. Now, I just want to be sure, too, for our listeners, so we can have some clarity here, is that uh, of the earlier in the program, you're talking about 120 people, that 21% of them who had type 1 are healed, and 31% um, are off of all insulin, uh, which are, is pretty remarkable. But right. what about the other numbers, uh, you know, the other, what is it, 80, you know, well, 90%? Well, what I see is a whole lot of people. Right. You know, okay. They're in their 60s, and they start to get what I call, that I'm starting to see more and more of. Okay, they're 60, 65, 55, and, and they start to have type 2 uh, diabetes. They're on a little bit of oral medication, things like metformin, other different things they take. You know, their blood sugars are you know, 
high. Uh, and 61% of those are healed in three weeks. Mm-hmm. You know, it doesn't matter what age. It really okay. doesn't matter. You, you know, I, I had a lady who was 92 years old. She comes, she's in a wheelchair, she's got high blood pressure. She's been on, she was actually, I think, on insulin as well. But, you know, she's 92. And three weeks later, her diabetes is, is gone. It should still go on a year later. You know, her blood pressure is gone. High blood pressure is gone. You know, her arthritis is gone. She's out of the wheelchair walking, and she's off all 11 of her medications. You know, and what's phenomenal that, about that is that she's in her 90s, and 92. the healing response at that age is much slower. <laughs> That's know? my point, though, see. <laughs> Not that much slower. Three weeks, right? Pretty fast. <laughs> right. <laughs> so I expect that it doesn't matter what age. I mean, I haven't had any... I've had a few people in their 90s come, and they all heal. It's not that hard. We should not think, oh, I'm too old to get healed. I just really want to make that point. Okay? Right. I expect, and she was more sick than most people, but when we get these people, and they come in in their mid-70s, early 80s, you know, and they're, and, and they're this, you know, type 2 diabetic, non-insulin dependent, you know, in three weeks we got a very good, your expectation, 61% are going to have a blood sugar less than 100 and, um, you know, off all medications. I mean, that's what I kind of expect at this point. And it isn't just expectations. It's the, it's the biomechanics of what goes on. And then after that, they stay on. Let's say they, they don't make it by 21 days. They don't make it by 25 days. Or maybe I had one lady in Israel, uh, she was really on insulin. But, you know, it took her nine months. She stayed with it. She was also about 100 pounds overweight, you know. Mm-hmm. You know, But she stayed with it, and it, it just took longer. But it doesn't matter. If you stay with it, eventually what will happen. The body loves to be healthy. And if we just nurture it with a healthy lifestyle and staying on the diet, which is not that complicated, it's, it's really, um, I'm going to say, <laughs> 25 to 40 percent, moderate, low-moderate, complex carbohydrates. What is that? It's greens, sprouts, leafy greens, you know, and, and that's your carbohydrate. Mm-hmm. It isn't fruits, and, you know, that's the main thing. You can have a certain amount of fats, which actually fat doesn't seem to be that big a deal. Um, our, our range of fat is 25 to 45% in their diet of fat, and people do just Fine. And their cholesterols do drop. I won't go into the whole discussion, but the recent research, meaning the last 30 years, has clearly shown that when you look at it, that uh, as, as, as the Archives of Internal Medicine concluded in 2009, there is no correlation between um, a high-fat diet and heart disease. That's an important statement. That's the Archives of Internal Medicine. It's the AMA saying that. So that's like pretty strong statement. So we find that people do 25, 45%, and they, and they do fine. And, and again, I say cholesterol goes down, triglycerides go down, and, and, so, and then protein stays between 10, for most people, you know, 10% to 25%. And it's not that complicated. That It's just a little shift. Now, what's really significant about the diet isn't the percentages. Mm-hmm. It's the quality of the food. You're t- talking about 100% live, organic, um, you know, high-quality food. I mean, the food of the tree of life here is, is veganic. We have the first veganic gardening farming program in, in the world. Mm-hmm. Okay, it's a master's program, I mean. But it's extremely high-quality. And, and I, you know, food plays a role, but, but clearly people go leave here and they continue to heal. So I don't say it's just our farming but I'm just making a little point. But they're getting high-quality food, and they're really living that lifestyle, and it, that's what we're talking about. It's not that complicated. And then everything else gets healed along the way. Because, oh, absolutely. You know, healing is healing. And diabetes, we really understand it, as I define in my new book, is accelerated aging. That's all it is. All the principles of aging we see in diabetes, it's just it's the Accelerator. It's a because the key driving force of aging is inflammation, and when you do live foods, 
you create a 400% less turning on of the inflammation genes. Mm-hmm. You really get an anti-inflammation effect. And, and indeed, the marker is C-reactive protein. That really tends to go to normal even in three weeks. Hmm. So we're really treating, this is what I've really discovered, which makes it exciting, okay? We're treating the fundamental source of aging, which is inflammation. And when you understand the cholesterol studies by heart, it's not cholesterol. It's inflammation. Right. Inflammation leads to heart disease. And, and most cardiologists know that, although, you know, general practitioners aren't quite knowing that at this point, but everybody's getting that. But it's inflammation, not fat, that is the cause of heart disease. That's fascinating. You know, I was just thinking, Dr. Cousins, as I was talking earlier about being at this Diabetes Expo, and I think after being at this and beginning to see in advertising, for instance, uh, what I noticed at this expo was there was really, to my memory, no existence of any approach in a way that you approach diabetes. What I had seen was, mostly, is ways to manage living with it. No, of course, it's all about management. Right. They don't get the concept of the cause, which is a toxic, epigenetic downgrade from a very poor diet of high white flour, white sugar, junk food, uh, pesticides, herbicides, Ugh. and so forth. And, you know, the, the eating in a way and living in a way that creates inflammation, and that inflammation is the driving force behind diabetes. Glucose is a secondary phenomenon. Oh. That's the thing. See, we're not ever talking about glucose. It's a symptom it's not the cause of diabetes. It's the genetic downgrade and the inflammation and, you know, which drives the diabetes and, and kind of creates it. That's the key, is inflammation is the primary cause of diabetes. Inflammation is the primary cause of, of aging. When we start putting together, I mean, what I've realized is, okay, that's it. All we need to do is live in a way that it treats inflammation, that prevents inflammation, ameliorates inflammation, calms down inflammation, however you want to say it, and you've now got the, you know, really uh, ultimate uh, uh, anti-aging program. And so what I've discovered is my problem is the, you know, this diet part of it is is really the key to Mm anti-aging. Remember, diabetes is just accelerated aging. So this is really, gets really simple. It's like, oh, eat whole, natural um, low glycemic, plant-based foods, and you're going to slow the aging process. <laughs> now, that sounds really profound. It sounds simple, but that's it. It even gets even simpler. I know for me, what I like to do is I break out the as-seen-on-TV Nutribullet, and I like making green smoothies. That's my breakfast. <laughs> yeah, and that's, and that's fine. And you and feel good. <laughs> yeah, and, and everything works. I mm-hmm. mean, at 70 which is my, I'm just going to injure my 70th birthday really soon, you know, I feel as vibrant, strong, stronger than I was as a captain of an undefeated college football team. Wow. And I, and I mean that, literally. I mean, mm-hmm. you know, I, I, maybe you mentioned it before, <clears throat> when, when I was playing football, I could do 70 push-ups. And at the age of 60, and I can do that now too, but I haven't done it because it's. I, I, I did 601 push-ups. Ah. Uh-huh. <laughs> okay. Now, how does that happen? That's nine times more. Well, nine to ten times more. Okay. It's just you, you know when you're on this diet, you have more energy, you have more endurance, in a sense, you have more strength. But you know, total strength. Um, and that's that's the beauty of it. And you're also flexible. I, I do yoga, but you need non-inflamed joints to be flexible. Right. Now, I, I playing football, I had an injury in every single joint, mm-hmm. L- literally. And all my joints are pain-free. Mm-hmm. So when I define, you know, really health, I, 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 I'm really defining, I'm not, co- I'm not concerned how long you live. It's how quality of life and are you pain-free, fluid, flowing with energy, 
all day long. So to me, that's a way to live. Absolutely. And, and that's what I call not anti-aging, you know, thing, but, but it's, it's being full on all the time, pain-free. You know, how many people you know 70 who are pain-free, fluid, joint-free, flexible, and strong, clear mind? I mean, these are things that happen when you do this. Mm-hmm. Now, I put more energy in because it's my job in a way, mm-hmm. but also I see myself as a spiritual athlete. And I just, you know, I have an interest in, in doing the optimal. Right. But, I'm, but, but what I'm discovering is, oh, well, this really works. Mm-hmm. Now, Dr. Cousins, because of your approach, uh, how has it been with, I guess, the main um, uh, medical establishment? Uh, because, again, like I said, at this expo, you just tended to see mostly people who were offering ways that you just live with this, how you can manage and live with it. You know, so once you get it, that's it. You're done. Yeah. So the answer is um, I'm offering, and this is the way I like to speak with, which is the way your opening story was. Mm-hmm. You know what? Here's an alternative if you're interested, you can do this. Just know there's an option. Okay? That's in America. I'm teaching all over the world. I just had people here from Papua New Guinea who healed their diabetes, but he was the ex-minister of health. Okay? Different story. I'm going to Papua New Guinea, and we're going to set up a, a program, which is what I'm doing now in Ghana, Nigeria, Ethiopia, you know, um, some places in South America where they're much more open. Mm -hmm. Why? Because they're closer to the natural ways to begin with. Mm. See, this is the key. And they're not as involved. I mean, how many pharmaceutical companies are in Papua New Guinea? Right? Right. So they don't have the option or the luxury or in Africa. I mean, who can afford medication? <laughs> right? That's for sure. <laughs> so, so where we're going is we actually have preventative and, you know, diabetic educational centers now in Ethiopia, physical centers, you know, where, where people built the, we built, we finance built the centers, they're teaching nutrition, they come here and train, we're doing the gardening, you know, we have that in Ghana, we have it in Nigeria. So, uh, in Cameroon, we're starting, programs are starting there. Um, and, and so it's not that big a deal for people because they're just one step away from their natural diet. And mm-hmm. the same thing in, in South America, it's the same thing. And so, like, when I was lecturing in Lima, Peru, um, the head of uh, public health in, in, in the area, I don't know if it's for a whole nation, but she's had a, she was head of 22 hospitals. Oh, okay. She was like, this is great, you know, can you please come back and set up these programs in all my hospitals? Mm-hmm. So there's a lot of reception where people are, you know, in the place where it's not that far from their understanding and from their lifestyle. It is harder in the United States, but I haven't gotten much resistance. Why? Because it doesn't matter if you follow what I'm saying. Right. You know, it, it, it's like, this is an alternative, you know, who's going to want to do that? Mm-hmm. Because it's so far they don't even see that it's competition, if you follow what I mean. Right. So I'm, I'm kind of like, it's not relevant to, you know, the forces that be. So they, oh, that's interesting. You know what? They talked about that when I was in medical school. Yeah, of you course. Know, I, I gave a presentation at uh, Tufts Medical School, and the head of the department, he loved to talk. You know, he said, you know they actually talked, everything you're saying, they actually said it. I mean, not with the details, but, you know, diet, exercise, you know, nutrition, all that thing. They mentioned it. They didn't, of course, know how to bring it into effect. If you look at, you know, the ADA, they mention all these things, too. They just don't know how to bring it into effect. And it's bringing it into effect is what makes a difference. Ah. Uh-huh. So it's really not out of alignment. I mean, find anybody, any doctor who won't, say, yeah, of course that's important. <laughs> but they don't know what that means, but they know it's important. And at least that's what people say. So it's, it's not really contradictory to anything, and it doesn't hurt anybody. Right. It's only a win. They can't say, well, 
eating healthily is going to hurt you. I mean, that nobody would. You, that's a hard stretch to make to say right. something like that. But well, that's kind of like how it is. Yeah, I was going to say it's. Well, think about it this way too. You're in the supermarket. We're just showing you to go down a different aisle that you're already in. That's right. That's right. <laughs> no, it's just you think about these things because whenever it seems something that can can seem alternative, and I just say seems, okay, mm -hmm. is that y you start having this sort of establishment step in that it kind of, there's a threat that it's going to rock their world about the way they're presenting and doing things for the general public. So they find a way to sort of discredit that as right. hokiness and nonsense. And my feeling is, you know, I could see the potential threat, but... Shouldn't a person be allowed, and this also comes to personal responsibility, be allowed to at least decide for themselves? Of course, and, and you know, people can decide. I mean, mm -hmm. they're not going to get the health system to pay right. for their training. They're not going to get, you know, financial support. It's not going to be part of the, uh, you know, probably, and I don't want to say it, you know, the, the social care systems that are being suggested, but they can do it. Anybody can do it. It's not that big a deal. I think, too, uh, Dr. Cousins, you really tap on something that I've talked about over many programs in the nine years we've been broadcasting, and that is people really should start coming to a better understanding of the use of health insurance. Because, you know, we spend a lot of time and a lot of money on our automobiles, and I have suggested you could spend a fourth of what you spend on your automobile maintenance, on health maintenance. I mean, you can actually pay for these things on your own. They're not very expensive. You know, think of your doctor as a health coach, so to speak. And, That's the Chinese approach. Right, and then on the other hand, you go out and buy yourself what's called catastrophic or major medical health insurance for the emergencies, just like you buy car insurance, you know, in case you get into a car crash. Which is exactly but for what some I do. reason, Which is people... exactly what I do. I have right. stock health insurance, you know. You know, and, it, and it's amazing that people don't wrap their heads around it, and it's still this big political debate, you know, that insurance is somehow supposed to save and be sure that we stay well, but yet there are so many restrictions and controls on this modality about how you can go about using it. And because it doesn't cover it, and I actually had a guest on the Beyond 50 radio program about a month or so ago who says, well, my insurance don't cover it, so I guess it's not good for me. So they literally buy the way insurance says you take care of your health. <laughs> you know, it's like we're just right. surrendering all of our personal power. Um, correct. People are not taking sovereignty responsibility right. for their health. I mean, you have to you have to take responsibility. And the way you're thinking is, a, I, I couldn't agree more, you know, it's like, you, you know, get your quality insurance and then take what you're not spending on all these premiums for, you know, super coverage and drug and whatever <laughs> and put it into prevention and you won't ever need drugs. Right. You know, my... Uh, Mother-in-law, who we take care of, she's in her 90s, not on any medication, mm. you know. And she's fine. I mean, she's fine. She's 91. She's 92, but, you know, she's fine. So, um, and she has all her facilities, faculties, and she's good. But that's, that's the way it is. She's also from New Zealand, so she, um, you know, it's a little bit different culture there. Right. But, you know, the, the people are taught to be independent and so forth in a different way. Now, also, Dr. Cousins, because you approach this holistically, there's more than just the diet component that you actually yes. help people with. Let's yes. talk a little bit about that. So we, we really include a variety of things, but I, I call it a way of life. Mm -hmm. So our program mm -hmm. includes a whole psycho-spiritual aspect where we teach people how to work on their addictions and their emotional, mental things. There's no doubt that type 1 or type 2 diabetics, their emotional and mental state 
clearly affects their blood sugar. I mean, there's no doubt about that, period. Sleep dramatically affects your drug blood sugar. You don't get enough sleep. It can raise your blood sugar up to 10 points even in one night. You know, a lot of people don't know that. So people need to get like six or seven, you know, seven hours sleep. And regular sleep, too, not just when you're ready to hit the sack, but try to get some regularity into it. Does Regular, that make sense? getting okay. to bed <clears throat> more like 10, 30, 11, or 10 is really optimal. Mm-hmm. I don't quite do that. I get into 10, 30 or something like that. But optimal is 10. Okay, that's good. Being happy, we know that. Uh, if people with diabetes have four times the amount of depression. We know that if somebody's had a major depressive incident, they have a 65% increase in getting diabetes the next year. Mm-hmm. So your emotional state is a, is a big deal. Spiritual state's important, too. We teach people how to meditate. We teach people, you know, because when your mind is calm and quiet, you're, you have much better blood sugar control and you're much like, less likely to get diabetes. Mm-hmm. We encourage people to practice breathing because oxygen makes everything work better. Um, uh, Not the, to mention, Dr. Cousins, and, uh, and we've been bold about this too, being able to oxygenate the cells was discovered to be the cure for cancer back in the 1920s. Yeah, Otto Warburg. Exactly. In yeah. fact, I actually had uh, an award-winning celebrity on the program who was talking about the cure for cancer and how to manage it holistically. And I just blurted out, well, there's a cure for cancer already. And she was surprised. She was like, really? Well, what is it? And I was surprised she had never heard of it. <laughs> yeah, well, we, but anyway. every day my wife and I do what we call pranayama. Because we, 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 yoga is another part of it. I'll explain right. that in a second. But pranayama is the breathing exercises. By the time you're 70, if you haven't been doing pranayama, you will, or breathing exercises, you may lose up to 50% of your lung capacity. Because if you use it or lose it, and the other thing is, when you're doing, we teach the tri yoga here, but the flowing yoga, all your organs are massaged, the blood, everything works better, and your whole endocrine system works better. And so again, you're, you have a more of a preventative against uh, diabetes, and that that's something we we teach as part of our program. The whole flow, and the organs are massaged, so there's, there's, it's like a very you know, complete program uh, in, in that and, and creating happiness in your life. You know, right. People, you know, happiness plays a big role in all all the health aspects. Mm-hmm. Fascinating stuff. It was as you were talking about happiness, I thought of a way that might help our listeners maybe gain some happiness, and that is through what you have around the house. And I was just thinking, because I was just doing this, I think it was yesterday, walking through an antique shop, and those things that you see that kind of bring back those happy memories. You you don't know what they are until you see them. Like, you know, why not buy that and put that in your house if it's going to evoke, you know, sort of a happy memory around the house? And then, of course, pursuing uh, your dreams and your desires and and so forth. We know, um, I've been doing a lot of work on the longevity issue, People who have meaning, purpose, and value in their life live longer. Mm-hmm. And it doesn't matter how hard you work. It's having meaning, value, and purpose. So part of what we observe is people have that are tend to going to heal better in the whole picture. And that's you know that's part of our program here at the, the Tree of Life. Um, is we, we help people. We're out in nature. Um, we're an hour from any city. We're up in the mountains, the air is clean, and we ask people to spend time thinking about your life. What's the purpose of your life? So we, we really encourage people to get in touch with their life purpose. Mm-hmm. And I want to say that's at any age. We don't want to think, oh, well, I'm 60, I'm retired. No, no. Every phase of our life we have life purpose, and we know that people who are living in life purpose do live longer than people who retire and don't consider a life purpose after that. 
Well, not to mention one of our missions, uh, Dr. Cousins, and I'm pretty sure you know this, is that retirement is not something we use as a language in, in, in this program. Right. <laughs> You've well, always I, got a usefulness somewhere. <laughs> that's the point. So we encourage our, you know, here at the Tree of Life, take time, sit in nature, get in touch with your life purpose, make your life meaningful at any age. Mm-hmm. And this must be really exciting work, especially as you go around the world and you get to, I guess, engage in different cultures. What is that like for you? Well, I really like people. So, you know, it's making these hard connections with people of all races, all colors, all religions, because behind all the, those illusions of difference, we have, you know, we're staring sharing the same heart. And so I love the, the, the sharing in that way of connecting at the heart level with people from all these different different traditions. Mm-hmm. It's, it's really, uh, really enjoyable and, and really gratifying. Now you, uh, as I mentioned, you have books such as Conscious Eating and Depression Free for Life. Those are being received well, I understand? Yeah. Uh, all my books now... All of them are all in Spanish. The diabetes is translated, you know, there's a cure for diabetes. And again, there's a new one coming out April 9th, um, which is my second edition, but it's really in the, almost an entirely new book. Um, and we have it in Portuguese, and we have it in uh, English, obviously Italian, and Spanish, and French. Mm-hmm and I think also in German. So um, it's, it's, it's out there in, 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 in many languages. Those are your major kind of languages, not in Chinese. Um, but you're working on it. Well, people are interested. I, I just got back from China, and people are interested. You know, so um, that's kind of the books are out. All my books are, are all of them are in Spanish, but um, in in. A, a number are in Portuguese, and I am teaching soon in in in, in Brazil as part of that whole process. So it's getting out there. Oh, great! It's getting out there. And as you said, look, diabetes is nothing more than accelerated aging. So let's get that reversed because that's what we want in the first place. Exactly. <laughs> and, and and that's the exciting thing for me is when I kind of really made that bridge. Right. Connection, it's like, well, everything I'm teaching is, in a sense, is uh, stabilizing, I mean, this would stabilizing the process so you're not really aging. Right. Well, well, it's kind of a myth. Okay, you, if you're not taking care of yourself, you will age. And, um, but if you do take care of yourself, and it does take more energy with age, to do that, you still have it all. I mean, as it said, uh, a model is M- Mo- Mo- Moses, age 120, eyesight had not dim, and his, uh, his quality of strength, in the, uh, the word is vitality, had not diminished. Mm-hmm. It was time to die. But he was in perfect health, mm-hmm. and that's my model. We have our time. Okay, that's fine. You know, that's what life is. But... To be totally vibrant and healthy until that time is what I'm, is what I uh, talk about. So I don't call it aging so much as uh, I haven't got the full term I want to give, but it's 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 basically once you're past your 20s, you you, you want to you're stabilizing in a, an optimal health state. Mm-hmm. And what I'm seeing is we can maintain that at any chronological age. I believe that. And Definitely. that's what I'm talking about. And that's kind of how I'm living my life. And that's why, in a way, although I'm, I would say better health when I was as captain of the undefeated football team, you know, it, there, there's just like, there's an evenness to the whole thing. Mm, fascinating. Yeah. Dr. Cousins, if you could, give out websites where people can get more yeah. information. DrCousins.com. <clears throat> DrCousins.com. It doesn't get any easier than that. It doesn't get any easier than that. That's why we have it. 
And uh, the people can call us at 520-394-2520. 520-394-2520. We have programs. I also have, like, whole person healings. So people can come and, uh, you know, get an optimal health evaluation. It's like two and a half hours. But put a lot of energy into that. And that's kind of, you know, how I, and then I, I just stay with them. I work with them over the years, to help them maintain. It's, as you mentioned, the word coach, and that's really what we're talking about. Once you get through the first phase, which is getting everything back in order, how do you maintain that? And then we have seminars in conscious eating and seminars in, in the, the psycho-spiritual part, and we do fasting, and people can fast at any age. Uh, people in their 90s again fasting. And these the fasting could be the most powerful, which well, just for a week, uh, green juice fast. Mm-hmm. It could be the most powerful anti-aging um, thing that I do. When I, when I see people turn things around, there's nothing faster than fasting. Mm-hmm. No drugs needed, no anything needed. You rejuvenate your, your whole system. You start to lengthen your telomeres, you're doing, and, and you actually start to experience almost immediately, the benefits of the whole lifestyle. And then you're very, very motivated. Mm-hmm. So we have all those things going on, you know, in, in this bigger picture of how to really uh, create an optimal lifestyle for uh, maintaining your optimal way of being. Reaching it first and then maintaining it as just the way it is. You mm. don't think about going downhill. You don't need to go downhill. Not needed. Not at all. And again, you can find out more about this at drcousins.com. Dr. Gabriel Cousins, thank you for joining us here on the program today. Always enjoyable to have you on here to let people know that, you know, yeah, there's the way we see things and then there's the way we would like to experience things. And that's the most important is to follow the way you want to experience things. <clears throat> right. And uh, I'm always happy to speak to you and I'm always happy to share. And I'm going to call it the natural way of living. Mm-hmm. It's like, this is not complicated. No, <laughs> as it shouldn't be. <laughs> right. Again, Dr. Cousins, thank you for joining us here on the program. Okay. okay, and then blessings to everyone out there. You bet. We want to thank you, the listeners out there. Again, the website is drcousins.com, where you can find out more about that. We do have a weekly e-newsletter. If you visit us at beyond50.blogspot.com, or just type in beyond50, the number 50, we're at the top of every major Search engine you can think of, America's Talk Show for Baby Boomers. Bam, just click there and sign up for our free weekly e-newsletter as well. We'll have more information about Dr. Cousins for you to review as well. We want to thank you for tuning in. This is the Beyond 50 Radio Program. I'm Daniel Davis, and remember, live your day past halfway.